a lot of you have been asking for this video for some time now and um, yeah now is about the right time to share my experiences with you of which is the best a camper van or a mower home so at the end of the day they're both a place where you can live you can travel you can clean yourself cook something for yourself sleep and you know just relax so what do I miss about the motorhome? Let's go there first. Without a shadow of a doubt, the motorhome had more space. But that's about where it stopped in all fairness. I don't miss anything else. It would be nice to have the same amount of space, but with space came like bulk. And one of the things that I'm loving about the camper van is the lack of bulk of the vehicle I'm driving so I can get to more places. And I think that's the ultimate thing to think about here is it's all right calling it a motorhome because it's got all those essentials in it, all those things that you need to sustain yourself. But surely a home is somewhere where you feel comfortable and therefore it's personal. It's up to you what you've got in there and what you consider to be important. And then after that, that's about adventure. The first camper van was just like this. It was actually a Fiat Jakarta 6 meter or 5.99 meters long. Um, exactly the same. It was a 20, I can't remember now, was it a 2019 model or something like that? 2018 model or something. Um, but yeah, it was a factory conversion. So it was made by Auto Trail and it was called a Tribute 590 or something like that. Um, it had um, two single beds that you could pull together into a double bed, a standard, although I did eventually convert that to having a fixed single raised up with a bit of storage underneath. Um, it had um, a toilet with a shower in there, it had a truma, blown air, gas, heating and hot water system. Um, it had a cooker and, you know, sort of burners from the gas that was on board. I had 70 litres of fresh water and 70 litres of grey water and, you know, somewhere to sit with a little banquette. It genuinely was, um, you know, a very compact home away from home. And our first motorhome was pretty much an identical kind of spec from that. Um, it was 5.9 metres long. Uh, that was a Bessica can't remember the exact details of that if i remember now or i find a photo i'll put it on the screen now and and that pretty much was the same sort of aspect you know it had a toilet shower room a truma blower heating system which also provided um, hot water for the shower um and hot water you know for washing up that kind of thing i had um two single beds that you could pull together as a double bed for sleeping on um you know a dining area sort of thing places to store things you know cook on and um, it genuinely was a motorhome version or a coach built version of the camper van so having everything with you obviously turns every vehicle really into a home if you can live in it and cook for yourself and do all that then it's home so for me i've made this my home the last van motorhome was called a motorhome and it had everything the same so it isn't about whether it's a motorhome or a camper van, but it's what you do with it. And more space equals a bigger vehicle. Bigger vehicle equals slightly more constraints about where you can go, where you can take it, and the adventures you can have. Fair enough, it's got slightly less space, but I can still get most of my stuff in there. But I can go to more places. If you're thinking, well, what's best for me? Well, let's have a chat, and I'll go over some of the things that have been important for me over owning different types of motorhomes and different types of camper vans and therefore the things that I think possibly might make a difference if you're thinking of choosing one or the other. So the first thing I think as a bit of a topic is stigma actually. Um, when I had a camper van that was factory built that was all right. When I moved from a camper van to a motorhome there actually was a little bit of stigma. Um, oh gonna be a motorhome are you gonna be one of those? Um, again from people with camper vans um, and then get the motor home sell the motor home and get a camper van and then you kind of delve into a different little bit of a problem which is it's a self-built camper van so actually this was 
six months ago um a builder's van or you know a delivery van or whatever it was just a van and now it's a camper van it's my home however there are a lot of people out there that will see it as a little bit of a downgrade <laughs> Um, there are other people that will see it as, oh, God, you've got one of those, have you? <sighs> Not got a lot of money then, have you? Um, or there's just people around that might just say, oh, dear, you have to build your own camper van. Oh, that's a shame. You've not got, you know, you not just go and buy one. So there is those aspects to owning a self-built camper van to a motorhome or even just a camper van to a motorhome. There is even... An A-Class, which is a completely factory-built um, motorhome, where, um, yeah, people do have a bit of a stigma between an A-Class motorhome and a coach-built. A coach-built is normally like the front end of a van with then the motorhome box on the back. So I think it's just like everything in life. I think if you own, um, you know, a stately home um, or perhaps, you know, a detached house, or a terraced house, or you live in a block of flats, apartments, whatever. Um, people are going to have different views about your home. Uh, and that doesn't change with camper van ownership or motorhome ownership either. Now let's talk about quality. When we last searched for a motorhome, when we bought our last motorhome, we went around and looked at an awful lot of different types of motorhomes from different manufacturers. Um, and obviously some people are not going to like what I say now, uh, but it's fact, it's not my opinion, um, but the British built motorhomes lack um, a degree of quality. And what do I mean by that? Well, they felt almost like they'd been built with a that'll do approach, um, with a bit of a budget, mainly built towards, you know, an idea that someone's going to go away for a couple of weeks, or four days, you know, a long weekend, every few weeks or every few months. So therefore, that'll do. Um, in the end, we settled for Burstner, a German manufacturer. And the motorhome was designed pretty much, you could tell, for all year round touring. Um, perhaps not living in. I wouldn't say that any manufacturer out there really thinks about whether someone's going to live in their motorhome full time. However, uh, Burstner really did think about how things were put together um, and the fixture and fittings and everything um, of the furniture and everything else worked really well. However, what I will say is having had coach built motorhomes and camper vans, as in, um, you know, a camper made out of a van, the structure of a van offers far more rigidity and comfort when traveling. So you don't get rattles, bangs, creaks, groans, and all that kind of stuff um, from a camper van. Well, in my experience anyway, having rebuilt my last one so that it was better for me, and entirely built this one anyway, um, obviously I know there are people out there that have got self-builds and they creak and moan a bit as they travel around, um, but the rigidity of the chassis does offer you a greater build platform um, than somewhat sort of you know semi-flexible um, coach built platform so from my experience anyway is when traveling around in a motorhome a coach built motorhome has a lot more creaks rattles and bangs and squeaks and everything else um, than a camper conversion out of a van so looking at it that way you know why do people have a stigma from a factory built system motorhome camper van over something you've built yourself when what you've built what i've built might be far superior in quality and standard over what they've bought and what they're complaining about and what they keep having to take back to the dealer because things keep breaking so it's all just sort of like up there really so i wouldn't really concern yourself with buying a motorhome a class c class coach but whatever um or camper van that's built by a company or building it yourself um for me personally, if somebody has a bit of a stigma about that and doesn't like each different class or whatever, uh, that's their issue. Um, I would personally go with whatever you uh, feel more comfortable with. So if your DIY skills are not really up to it, 
and you can afford to go and buy something that's built by someone else go and do it um, and just be aware that there may be sort of some maintenance issues to deal with much like there could be if you buy somebody else's converted van or if you convert your own van um, and perhaps your skills like mine are a bit basic and now and again you've just got to go yeah um, that's kind of broke i need to go fix it again which does happen and as you notice i'm in a different van <gasps> and somebody else's different opinion so did i make a mistake selling the motorhome no is that it yep just very very simply no not at all that is so much more you yeah. that man yep absolutely you don't need that big old motorhome you don't need the trouble getting into places and out of places and all of the stuff you know you've got everything that you need in there and even a little bit of stuff that i need in a more <laughs> compact place that you can have everything and it gives you more versatility to do everything you want. So, and you built it yourself. So it's exactly as you want it. Why would that be wrong? How could that be wrong? Well, just to kind of like finish this video off, um, I built my camper van because it fits my needs, basically. So I haven't got underslung anything. So it means I've got more ground clearance. Um, it also means that I can obviously use my van all year round in any climate as well. I don't really have to worry about my tanks underneath freezing up. Um, I don't have gas because I went with electric. It simplifies the installation and it's also something else I don't have to buy. My electric is free. Um, it's generated when I drive from the alternator or from my solar panels when it's sunny. So there are many different things about building your own van versus buying one. Now obviously in our last van we still managed to have two years living in it but there were some modifications made to it to do you know we needed to do ultimately it was also designed for winterized use as well so that helped as well so there are lots of little different things and lots of things i've probably not even talked about here um not talked about engine size or you know automatic versus manual or big three liter engines over two liter engines which skylight you should get or you know which brand is the best one or which is the worst one or anything like that um I just really wanted to sort of um, let people know that from my experience of owning, you know, different types of vehicles, factory built and one I've done myself, um, I know this is built to my specification. So it's already got quite a sort of like, you know, um, a quite a high status in my view because it does everything I need it to do. Um, but it, the other ones were okay. So don't be put off by... Um, a factory built, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, you can always modify it to make it fit your needs. But if you do want to go out there and build your own, yeah, it's definitely the way forward. Just bear in mind it might not be as spacious as you want it to be. So to answer the main point of this video, um, and the main question everybody says, um, you know, John, you made a mistake getting rid of the motorhome. Well, did I? Did I really make a mistake? Um, to make a mistake um, is, you know, a way to identify that you did something wrong. I fail to see that. You might have a different opinion, but I don't think I made a mistake. And I think you'd know by now if I had. And I can't see a reason why I would change it for anything else right now. It works for me. It goes where I want it to go, and it does what I want it to do, and everything is just as I, well, almost planned it to be. I guess I've not covered every question that people might have, so if you've got any questions that I've not covered, obviously ask down below, and um, I'll do my best to answer them. But well, hopefully this has answered the biggest and the most popular question right now, uh, which was, um, you know, have I made a mistake, or which do I prefer? motorhome or camper van so at least i can put that to bed now it's done dusted and finished if anyone else ever asked me that question i can just point to this video and we're done with right until the next time guys you take care i'll see you again bye